Hello, going to draw the cat today. Obviously you can apply these rules and the proportions to other animals, maybe a rabbit, maybe a dog. Um, but you need to understand that animals have shapes and you can, you can help yourselves to draw the animals by thinking about those shapes before you start. Now he keeps moving, so I've taken some photographs and cheated. Probably the best way. Um, enjoy the exercise and I should be working with acrylic, so colour mixing will be essential. You, you can use whatever medium you want. Right, so you've got your images of your animal, your cat, your pet. Uh, first thing to do is realise that animals have different viewpoints, depending on where you took the photograph, from above, from the side, another side profile, a little bit of a head there. And if you want to try and draw your animal shape, you have to understand what their total shape is. So here, if I look at Jake the cat, I have a circle, and I'm pressing on a lot harder than you should, just so that the camera can pick it up. He's got a circle around his body there and he's got a circle around his head and it's about there. He looks like, uh, is it BB-8 off um, Star Wars? Um, so we have a gap in the middle and the reason why we have the gap in the middle is because he has a neck, okay? And we can look at the shape of that neck and, and plot that separately. Now he also has a leg. Okay, now if we drew a straight line from his eye downwards, so let's say his eye centrally in his head, we would then be able to get his leg. And his leg is not dead straight, it's actually at an angle. So we'd have to draw the leg because it's supporting his weight like so. Now inside this big circle here, we've got a hip bone and animals' hips are quite big. And he's got a lot of fluffiness by his paw and then obviously his tail, you can just about see it goes out like so. So there we have Jake the cat, if I just move it up, in his ears. Let's not forget the ears because they're the cute bits. Are kind of up there and there's a shape. You just have to look at the shape. It's a bit like an M. He's got a very, very tiny point for his nose, just there. Okay, and then we have a little nose bit in there and then his mouth is here. That hopefully has shown you the shapes, the coding, like computers, the coding that goes behind the drawing. Now, obviously you can tweak it as you get to work. You know that he's got fur sticking out and you know his shape down here isn't quite as perfect as that. But you, you then work into your drawing and that's that shape there. If we look at his head here, it's basically a ball. I always joke that my cat's head is like a beach ball anyway. There's nothing in it. Big circle, start with a big circle, and you know towards the bottom, so if it was a clock, you know that at about four o'clock, there's a little line that intersects that circle, and that's his nose, and it's curvy. And you also know straight above, there's quite a bit more of a brow here. If we looked at one o'clock, we've got an ear that's sticking out at that sort of angle. Always check with your pencil the angle. Okay, and then you can just transfer the angle across. I'm working with one of my favourite pencils here. It's, there's hardly anything left of it, but I do like it. It's just very easy to put the marks down. Now we get intersected just as we get to his head there with this oval shape. And it's actually a pointy ear, but it's an oval. Its basic circle is an oval. And that's the other ear with a bit of a crinkle in there because of the skin. And then he's got this shape here that comes away from our original circle because obviously that's his neck. And he's got this little fat bit down here under his chin. If we pop him back into a square, like so, whoops, almost knocked the camera over, then that's Jake's head and it fits into the parameters of the square. Now some artists will grid up an image where you, you, you put your grid lines in and you copy each section. I think that's a really good process for getting absolute accuracy in if you've got the patience, but it's also good to learn how to draw something without relying on that method. And it's all about shape association. Now we've got an eye here and his eye is in line. I'm looking for a pattern here. There's like a triangle. I'll pop the triangle in. It's directly in line with that edge there and it's higher than his nose. So his eye and I can't see the full eye, I can only see the bottom curve and that lovely dark triangle where his tear duct is. So we have to pop the eye in, draw what you see, not what you think you see. Because if you draw what you think you see, because you want it to be a beautiful glowing cat's eye, it won't look right. Then all we have to do is start putting in his markings. We know there's markings here. 
we know his nose actually goes up, up there and there's his little nosy bits got some little dots that come across here and start he starts to look at like a cat so the way you finish him off is you start with your paints and your colors you look for the darkest parts first where are all those nice dark parts well they're in his ear they're on his head they're down here because of the shape of his face and he's got the markings as well and this area down here is also quite dark so we have to fill those in nice and dark and you carry on working into it if we take an example like this one here his head is in a different position so here we go again there's the ball so draw a circle i've already made that judgment then I've got a bigger circle. Now I mentioned under BB-8 earlier, this is a lot closer this time. His circle, I reckon it's about that shape. It's a lot more closer. So much so the back of his head here, we have a lovely line that comes down here into his neck and then pops back out again before coming to find its tail here. And then likewise, we come around this side, we've got these little chops, but this time, instead of being part of the circle, his neck juts out and he's got like a curve because of his tummy part there. He's that lovely shape. And then it goes on to his paws and there's another paw behind. And then you can use the edge of this nice baskety thing here. Well, I, I think it's a nice basket. Jake doesn't always like it. And you can put that edge in and start working out the face like we did here. What sort of shape is it? He's got that lovely oval shape. Does it go outside the circle? Yes, it does. Triangle pointing up again. He's got an indent for an eye there. We've got another eye there. And his little nose. That gets him into all sorts of trouble. He's just there. Some of the patterns on his body, worth noting, they curve round. Okay, don't draw them straight because you'll end up with a stripy cat that looks like a ball. But these curves, they flow round his body and that helps him to look round and bulbous, which he is. Very, very podgy cat, my cat. I'm going to be working on this study here just because I wanted to zoom in on these lovely white whiskers. And I feel that this takes my, this, this kind of has my cat's character. An old lazy puss who loves his food and loves attention and loves mischief. But he's in a kind of nice pose there and I can see the patterns already on his face there's a big intersection here where his head meets the body where there's all these little white whiskers and there's an intensity from that eye and we've got these lovely shapes there's the two paws we know it's a cat but it's a zoomed in profile of my cat instead of one like that and i'll do um either oil pastel or acrylic i might do both actually for you okay oh and pencil study i could do that as well but no we're going to do color Right, before I start painting with acrylics, just thought I'd let you know what I'm planning to do because it'll help when you're watching a time lapse that's so quick. Um, I've got my faithful plate of uh, acrylics popped on there. I'm an artist that likes mess and I don't have clean white plates. So the colours are all there, nice range of primaries to the browns that I already have, a bit of ochre. The only thing that's missing actually is white. I haven't put my white on there. I'll do that in a minute. Um, but it's a basic set of uh, acrylics, nice quality ones. Okay, by Dale Rowney, um, System 3. Basically, acrylics are acrylics. They're greasier and they work better when they've got a little bit more of the plasticky oil that they put in them. So that's why some are more expensive than others. And their pigments are a bit sharper. Because the beauty of acrylics is you should be able to layer the paint over different colours and it, it should actually um, have a lot of opacity. Now, obviously, the cheaper ones will have a thinner opacity, which means you have to work a bit harder with them. But they're still acrylics and they're still blocky sink and they're still coachy paint brushes. Kill the paint brushes and make them look like this. So I've borrowed some of my students' brushes. Look at that. But if you know me, you know that that will create the most amazing fur effects when I come to do the detail. So don't trash or throw away the brushes that have got that nice spikiness because we need them. They get us our fur. Um, but 
what I will do is I'm going to start the background first, always the background first. Uh, and I'll probably put the darker colours on because it's easier to put a whiter colour um, with acrylics, lighter colours over the top of the darker tones. So you'll need to do that for fur. So if you think, God, she's gone too dark, it's deliberate. OK, I'm obviously doing this quickly. I'm not going to be making this into a master masterpiece because it's a demonstration for my students, essentially, in lockdown. But obviously we're not in the classroom, so I can't do it stage by stage. I'll do it all in one hit to a point where it's acceptable for GCSE or A-level. Okay then, off we go. So what you have here is a cat that's just been filled in in very basic background colours and I have deliberately gone over the white. Sort of thing to ask yourself is where there's white on the actual original image, which you can't see, um, is it white or is it like a greeny white? And is his paw and the white fur on his body whiter than the whites around over here? So there's a balance of colours. There is green in my cat's fur. You might have seen I was putting little bits of bluey green into my browns to make sure that he was coming out in the correct way. So the next phase will be to put some detail on. And it's how far you push that detail right to the bitter end when you put his whiskers on and any refinement. Right, he's not finished. He could have lots and lots of detail added, but to get us to GCSE standard, he's there. Um, you can, we can work more detail. We can scuff more of the fur. He's still missing a lot of his markings, little furs in his ears, but it's gonna take probably a good half an hour to refine that even further to get more clarity. I've put the marks on here for his nose, but I need to smudge them out. Um, I might cheat and use pencil crayon uh, or a white pen for his whiskers because they need to be so refined. But essentially, through dry brushing and putting on that background first, that cat is starting to look realistic. I will complete him for you, but I'm not going to time lapse it just because it'll take much more of the same. There we are. Enjoy doing your pet. Have a go with acrylic and I'll do a chalk study for you as well because I know some people prefer chalk on a bigger scale because this is quite a small scale really. Who's this? What do you think? Marks out of 10? You're not even looking at me. You impressed? You're purring, so I take it that's a yes then. Thank you for posing. <laughs>